Hey guys, what's up? It's once again, it's mp4podcast.com. Today we're looking at my Amazon Kindle Fire leather case. It's by a company called Mar... Mar... Uh, Wear, Mar Wear. Um, it's actually a really good case and I'm very happy with it. So, let's take a look at the case. I'm going to have to maybe move the camera around or uh, do it one-handed at times, but here you have a rubber band, a... Uh, cloth rubber rubber band. And this is really good because this actually keeps the case, um, you know, the front flap from moving around. As you can see, it's like that. So that's pretty. That's pretty good right there. I really do like this. Okay. Now I do want to show you something else right here. And as you can see, there's these lifts right here. This is the I guess teeth whatever they grab. Now I'm just going to move the camera around so you guys can see that. So right there, that's probably a better shot. So what's good about it is once you put the flap, if you do put something heavy on top of this case for whatever reason, it's not going to, this flap will not be pushing on the screen of your Amazon Kindle Fire. Okay, another good thing about this case is it has a flap for you to put your hand through, okay? So this is actually really good if you're reading um, that you can do this. And let me just go like that. As you can see, there's my hand. <clears throat> and that flaps a little loose, but all we have to do is, with this rubber band, put the rubber band around it. And as you can see, it's pretty secure. So that's a pretty good case. And I think it's well made. Another great thing about this case is, I'll show you right here, we're going to remove the rubber band. And what you want to do is pop out the bottom uh, teeth right where my thumb is. So here we go. And we will now move it. So now we have a really nice stand for the case um, and that works out quite well as you can see right here I believe I paid $19.99 for this case and um, it's very easy to put back you just snap it right back in um, and it's really well made another thing I do want to get a few tips about the Amazon Kindle a lot of people have complained about is that the power button is um, was at the bottom. However, um, that's not really a problem anymore because Amazon uh, uses the, uh, what do you call it, the um, accelerometer. So they flip the screen, so that's no, not really a problem. You're not going to hit it. The only thing about it is your speakers are now at the bottom. So anyway, it works out pretty good anyway because the hand strap is right over here, so that's pretty good. The only time that that will probably maybe be a problem is if you're playing a video game and it doesn't use the accelerometer. Um, it, if that really bothers you, I recommend that you email the company that makes the game and they can update their software to the, use the accelerometer. Um, another thing I want to talk about, let me see, is there anything else I missed? Hmm. This, this really isn't an Amazon Kindle Fire uh, review, but there is one thing that I really do like about the Kindle Fire. Um, I had a problem, you know, when I installed too many apps or whatever. And if, is this with Android, depending on what, it's gotten better with um, newer versions of Android firmware. However, I did install uh, way too many applications, and the Amazon Kindle only has a gigs of RAM and only six is available for real use the other two gigs is for the OS um, but getting your Amazon Kindle back up and running really wasn't that big of a deal it was probably one of the easiest devices to restore and just because when I had to restore it I just restored it I put in my Amazon password and username and everything that I ever bought um, movies TV shows was everything was in the cloud and I had complete access to everything I bought. Now, let me explain why 
this is a problem with other devices. Um, Android applications, if you buy them, uh, they're yours. But if you get them for free, and then you delete it, and then you want to get it again, and now it's paid, you can't download it again for free. That's a little bit of a bummer. Um, now, on the Apple side, Apple changed this with their apps. Before with the uh, firmware 4. Point whatever it was, if you downloaded a free app and it was paid but you deleted it, you had to pay for it. Uh, something about the system, it didn't keep track of connect to your account or what you bought. But with iOS 5.0 or whatever it is, 5.1, whatever people are on now, if you download a free app and you delete it, it's still yours now. That's because Apple's trying to uh, add the the multi sync so if you download something your iPad it'll show up on it'll, your iTunes on your computer will download it or it'll transfer over the network and it'll move over to your iPod, iPhones, whatever. But uh, with Amazon Kindle it's everything's in the cloud. If it's uh, books, if it's applications, if it's music, if it's uh, TV shows, movies, everything's in the cloud. And um, the web browser is okay. It's not the greatest web browser in the world. I'm not saying it's a bad web browser. However, it doesn't have the snappiness of my new iPad on the uh, with Safari. But it's not a bad browser. But it's just it's just not as good as the Apple Safari one. But overall, I have to say I do like the Amazon Kindle. It is only two hundred dollars. And they do have a lot of Game Loft games. And if you guys know, I do like Game Loft. And they are reasonably priced. Sometimes they're a buck more than maybe when they're on sale or regular price compared to Android Market or uh, Apple's App Store or whatever. But for $200, $200 it's a pretty good deal. Now, also, the other thing is that you can download side applications um, that, you know, there was a game I reviewed, uh, Flight Panic, I think it was called. It's on my Android channel. Um, and that game, you know, it's, it's not available on Amazon. However, you can go to, like, a third-party site, you know, that has Android applications or the developer site. Sometimes they'll have a direct download for the APK. You can download it and just play it. So, or you can go to Opera's um you can go to Opera's um, um, app store and download download apps right from Opera. And if you guys aren't familiar with Opera, it's that other alternative um, browser. It's kind of like an O that's red. Uh, so there are other app stores and stuff like that. So once again, if you enjoyed this video, please um, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. So anyway, um, I'm going to do a video uh, um, coming up this week about the battle of the 7-inch tablets, what I like about all the different tablets and what I don't. The 7-inch tablets that I have is, of course, the Amazon Kindle. I also own a Acer, I think it's a 1000, I forget what the model number is. I own a Blackberry Playbook, and I do own a Barnes & Noble Nook. And out of all the tablets as of right now, the two that I probably like the most are Amazon Kindle... Um, it's a toss-up between the Acer and the BlackBerry Playbook. What I don't like about the Barnes & Noble um, Nook is that they disable third-party app installing. So you can no longer do that with Barnes & Noble's um, tablet. So that's kind of a bummer. So anyway, guys, take, take easy. MP4podcast.com signing out. Take care, guys. Bye.